Hey everybody, welcome, welcome to Inner Stage Window. Thank you for everybody that's hanging out in the chat right now that has been so very patient with us getting started. Um, we had a couple of microphone issues on my end and then Landon had some internet issues, but we're here now, we're here. And I'm here today- The men, the men heard and they now are trying to silence us. That's what's happening. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Like they heard there was gonna be like the mildest amount of man hating and they said, fuck that noise, goodbye, no stream for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but we fixed it. Okay, we fixed it. We're good now. <laughs> yeah, we're we're we know how to work technology. We're women. It's That's fine. Right. That's right. So hey Lar, hey Bree, hey Mochi, Ty, Salty, Jane, Naomi. Oh my gosh, all of my friends are here. So apparently all we had to say to get you guys to show up to the stream on time was just promise some man hating. That's what we've learned. Yeah. So anytime that's going to happen, we're going to be sure to advertise it in the future so that you guys are all here <laughs> with us. <laughs> oh my word. Okay. Well, um, so yeah, obviously I'm here today with um, my as usual co-host Landon. So say hi, Landon. Hi, Landon. <laughs> All right. And um, if you could introduce a little bit about the topic today and, uh, and explain what we're going to talk about while I get the game going. So we joke that we're talking about man hating, but what we're really talking about here is sexism and how it affects our RP style as well as both in the character and out of character choices that we make and how ways that sexism affect your RP, whether you know it or not. Um, and I think that the whole purpose here is trying to bring to light behaviors that are toxic, that you might not be aware that are toxic, that are going against you if you are a woman, or that you might be doing if you were, if you were raised as a man. And, um, and that uh, just bringing awareness to it. And I think that that's really what the goal is here. Oh my God, I'm Cassandra. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. I am the badass queen of the north. <laughs> of course, I figured if, if that was going to be our topic today, then your your picture had to be of um, of Cassandra herself. You know, <laughs> of, of, the, of the breaking down the stereotypes, woman. That's right. You know, it's, Take it your just power seemed appropriate. Back. And I had to take a, a picture of her from um, one of the later Game of Thrones seasons. Yeah. So, you know, that was, that's like, Which you know, we're, we're late stage. Badass. We're late stage Cassandra <laughs> right now. <laughs> yes. Okay. So a couple of things that I, I definitely want to explain today. Um, we are taking this, as always, from a perspective of largely narrative role plays. You know, um, I know that in other roleplay spaces, such as combat roleplay or certain ERP scenes, um, the balance between men and women is either more even or it's more dominated by men. But in the spaces that we tend to occupy with narrative roleplay, it is mostly dominated by women. So that's why we kind of say that today. I do understand that there are roleplay scenes where that's not the case, but that's not the roleplay scenes that we're in. <laughs> The ones that we're in are largely women as the players, or like if men are there, they are typically, you know, on the LGBT spectrum somewhere, right? Like they're gay or they're trans or they're, you know, whatever. We don't got a lot of cishet straight men in narrative role play. That's just how it is. <laughs> and we, we absolutely do, but I think that the, because there's a larger percentage of women, Seeing how the effects are of sexism on the like roleplay community is easier for us for us to see because we see those behaviors a lot less, or they're not mm -hmm. the norm. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that women can't do some of the behaviors that we're talking about; they absolutely can and do. And we're not going to just talk about how men are the problem. There are some issues that women do things too. Yeah, we're going to talk but... about the patriarchy. <laughs> the patriarchy. <laughs> Thank you for the biddies, Lar. Appreciate you there. Um, yeah, and, and so, so kind of dis disclaimer for today, if that sort of thing does upset you, if like you really can't handle hearing women go on and on about like, ew, men, and you know, if like, because we're going to generalize about men, you know, we're going to do some of that. So if that really upsets you, it's okay to tune out of today's episode. It's not for you. As they say on TikTok, today's episode is for the girls, the gays, and the theys. So um, that's who we're talking to, and that's who we're assuming is listening. So if that's not you, uh, so sorry, but that's just going to be how it is today. And if it isn't you and you're still here listening, know that you are one step closer to passing the vibe check. That's right. Because 
willing to listen to see how you can change your behavior or see what behaviors might not be acceptable from another person's perspective is an amazing first step. That's right. And we are going to share some tips. If you are strong and able to, to listen to this, then we are <laughs> going to share some of those tips with you um, towards the end of today, like how you can not be one of those guys. <laughs> yes. That yes. will for sure come up. Okay. So I, I think that's all of our intro and disclaimers that we, that we wanted to do. Is that right? Did we get through it? All did we basically, yeah. did we scare off all the men at this point? Are they all gone? So. <laughs> we dropped one, we dropped one viewer. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> Bye. Bri, I understand though. No hard feelings. Bree, you passed the vibe check. You're good. That's right. <laughs> okay. okay. So, um, so with that being said, uh, I guess favorite things, right? So Landon, oh, what's yeah. your favorite thing this week? So I have been doing this new hobby, and I think I've talked about it a couple of times on stream, that I am making candles now because I've gotten really into like witchcraft and spell making and all of that fun stuff. So I am in the process of making a really cool candle of a lot of things that I've collected, um, and it's just turning out to be beautiful. And so that's going to be my favorite thing again this week. Oh, well, you'll have to, again, show us the finished product oh, yeah. um, in the cafe when you have it. No, there definitely, there definitely will be. Like, this has been a, it's been a, um, it's been a spiritual one, this one, because it has been a several day process, whereas, like, usually I can do candles in an afternoon because they're just fun little things, but this one has been like, you know, it's a full moon, so need to collect that moon water, and need to, you know, charge stones and all that fun stuff, so. They're trying to make this one a little <laughs> bit more special, right? Yes, absolutely. I so love that. it will be a very pretty one and it'll be very nice. I'm very excited. I love that. That's going to be so cool. So what about you, Karen? What is your favorite thing? So my favorite thing this week, a lot of you guys already know, but for those that um, pretty much just tune into the Saturday stream, this will be news for you, is uh, kittens. <laughs> uh, we doubled our cat population this week. Sort of accidentally, sort of on purpose. So, um, hey, Patch. Uh, hey, Kay. Happy to have you guys here today. So, um, so we doubled our cat population this week. So for those of you guys that don't know, there are a bunch of stray cats in our neighborhood. And we sometimes feed and play with some of the more friendly ones. You know, I mean, they're just, they're freaking adorable, cute kittens. How are you going to not? So we do that. And um, it's been really cold and rainy the past couple weeks. And it's just finally now actually started to get a little bit better outside. But um, one of the cats during a particularly cold and rainy day ran inside the house. <laughs> and we oh, closed uh... the door behind them. <laughs> so mine now my cats now yeah so the cat was got in the house and then the other one like its best friend basically we lured into the house with temptations you guys have cats you know temptations those things are like crack for kitties so we lured its best friend into the house so now both of them are in the house and um kind of at this point we're sort of acclimating them seeing how they do i have no idea if we're gonna keep them but we're gonna at least take them to the vet get them some medical attention i think they're both girls one of them i know is a girl um the other one unsure because we haven't had a chance to touch the belly we're trying but you know i mean they're stray cats so it's taken some time um so we're gonna get them I mean, if they're letting you touch them already and they've just been inside the house for a few days it's mm -hmm. pretty good well we've been playing with them for the past year so it's like it's not like they don't know us you know, yeah. they're just, they're just being confined now. So, <laughs> um, so we're going to get them some medical attention and then kind of see where it goes from there. We might keep them. We might rehome them. We might put them back outside. It just really depends on how they adjust to uh, life in the house and life with our two other cats. So we shall see, but I have, um, I have a little TikTok of, uh, both of them up on my TikTok. So if somebody could type exclamation social, I think it is that will show you all my socials and you can get to my TikTok. And you can see um, the kitties there. Oh, maybe it's exclamation socials, plural. Let's try that. There we go. Hey, that one worked. Yeah, so you can go to my TikTok, see what they look like. Their names are Coke. Coke, because Coke has a little white patch on the nose. But we pretend it's like Coca-Cola, but it's not. And, uh, and then the other one's name is CJ. Because we don't know if it's a girl or a guy. So we were like, well, we, we, it could be Cherry if it's a girl. Or Jack if it's a guy. But right now, it's just CJ because we don't I, know. I understand mm -hmm. why that Levi didn't like Pepsi. Yeah. 
but it's Pepsi. <laughs> yeah, I know. So the name I picked for the other cat at first and was calling it for a while was Pepsi. And Levi didn't like it, so it didn't get chosen. There's three of us that live in the house. There's me and my husband and our roommate. So essentially, I got outvoted. But, you know, it is what it is. CJ's the less friendly one. So we might not, CJ might be going back outside after it gets spayed. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> but yeah, that's my favorite thing this week. Kittens. <laughs> kittens i love i love a, when when kittens choose you mm -hmm. like i know obviously it was rainy and cold but that was an obvious choice of you know what i think i'm ready to turn in from the streets <laughs> I'm ready to get off these hot this hard life and live the life of a house cat and this seems like a good family here well there's like six or seven of these stray cats and these two are the only ones that really care anything about us so they definitely chose us yes so yeah. That's amazing. Yep. You are the chosen one. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Okay, I think um, let's go ahead and get into the topic. So how do how do we want to get started today? I think, I mean, I think we already talked about it as far as like what this line is. So it's not going to be a shocker. Yeah. But being a man in a woman dominated hobby is a very turn on your head um, dynamic. And this happens, I think, a lot also in um, women-dominated work as well. Think nurses, think um, teachers, think anything that child, mm. anything childcare related. Uh, there's a there's a turn on the dynamic when it is a woman-dominated field, and that happens in RP too. Yep. Yep. So it, I I think I think we can all kind of imagine this very easily if you think about. Um, I'm sure everybody had at one, at least one of the schools that they went to in grade school was was something where like there was one male teacher, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, like that was my fifth grade experience. It was all ladies and there was one dude. Um, we have we have 15 currently in the fifth grade. We have 15 teachers and one ma male. Yeah, teacher. I believe that for sure. Yeah. OK. Um, narrative role play is really what we're talking about. So we're talking about role playing text based role play largely in fandom spaces or in like um uh, that type of that type of area. So yeah, it's women dominated, just like fanfic is women dominated it's for the same reason. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely a. It's kind of like I like to compare. I know that they're not really equal, but I like to compare video games and RP. I feel mm -hmm. like like that they're very similar if in terms of ways, but very dominated in their different genders. RP yeah. and fan fiction and and novel and not and narrative writing is more w woman dominated whereas video games is more male dominated mm -hmm. obviously there are female video gamers who are really successful and really damn good at playing video games and love video games you don't hear those stories as often and you don't come across them as often mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. the same goes for rp yep exactly and i think that, that a lot of the people are getting similar things out of role play and out of video games it's an escapist hobby right so video games tends to be what men who want some escapism do right and uh and narrative role play tends to be what women who want some escapism do right yes yeah. yep yeah which i mean which also sits there and goes well i mean one story is already made for you and the other story you have to create on your own i'm sure there's some control issues there it's fine um. <laughs> i think there's a lot of reasons that is um that, that we we could definitely get oh, into if we want to absolutely. Uh, you it's know, not on our schedule, but it, it no. definitely says something there. Oh, yeah. The, the fact that stories that are released by the mainstream tend to be for men, you know, so obviously they are catered to and we are not so much. So we have to make our own. <laughs> um, so I guess I, what I wanted to start with is is a little bit of like our particular experiences with men joining our role plays. So for people that, that don't know that are kind of new to my content, um, Landon and I, along with several of our friends, have been running narrative role play groups for a long, long, long time, long, long time, many, many years. And yes. uh, we tend to attract, you know, lots of uh, girls, gays and theys, right? Not a lot of men. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, though, we do definitely get men joining our role plays. It happens. And, uh, and yep. they're welcome to, right? Like we're not, we're not against men joining or anything like that. The space is not, you know, we, we don't create spaces that are like exclusive for, for women and gays, right? Like men are, men are welcome. It's fine. However, <laughs> it's fine. However, okay, nine, times, 
yeah. I'm very quick to <laughs> say that it is often not brought up about the fact that they're a man. Like, gender is not a part of the conversation no. that is for the general public. It is definitely part of the conversation in the mods chat, but that's another <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, but we, we don't draw attention to it, right? Like, that's yes. we don't draw attention to that. That's, like, their business, right? We really don't care what people's genders are, and we often, you know, don't even ask. We just ask what pronouns they want us to use and leave it at that. You know, that's all we need to know. We don't really care. <laughs> uh, however, when we do have, like, um, a cis dude join our role plays, they typically don't last very long. Um, they do certain behaviors within their first couple of weeks that we try to discourage um and not that not that women don't do these behaviors too and, and we react the same way when women do them but when men do them um uh, we tend we tend to get certain certain reactions well, you know specific on this one i think yeah. this one there's a specific uh nine yeah. out of ten men that come into the rp within the first week or week and a half inform the mods either publicly or privately exactly what we need to do in order to fix the rp yeah like they they see flaws in it like they instantly see flaws and they want to help us fix them yeah and it's not even it's not even like a um like let's have a conversation or this is an issue or anything like that it literally is uninvited advice mm -hmm. of here is how to fix your problem that we don't think is a problem. And it isn't <laughs> a problem. It's never been a problem. It might be a problem for you, but that's run your own RP then. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I think they don't realize, like, for whatever reason, m the men that we encounter in role play tend to assume that we don't know what we're doing. Like, I don't know. Like, it never occurs to them that this. The, the, I think that's men in general. Well, yeah, possibly. Like, pro, man's yeah. Like, <laughs> thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think like they don't they don't consider the possibility that like, hey, maybe these girls have been doing this for decades and decades and have actually set up things exactly how they want them to be set up. And they're just not to my taste. You know, like that type yeah. of thought, like just never crosses their mind. Like they think, oh, they're, they're not doing the role play in the way I think they should. Or I think they'd have more success if they do this, that and the other. And it never occurs to them to frame that as a question. It they like they assume that we don't know what we're doing. You know yes. that we're like all teen. They like they basically they they treat us like teenagers. Um, that like this is our first role play and, and we don't have no idea. And when in fact we have all been role playing for like decades and running role plays for almost a decade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. And um and when and when they do it, so they'll do it publicly sometimes as like a as like a flex to the rest of the role play. And that always goes super well because then everyone piles on them about how they need, they're wrong <laughs> and this is how we do it. And we're very nice, right? Like we try to explain to them, like, this is actually how we do it. And this is why we do it this way and da, 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 da. And we have um, some absolutely lovely players that will typically jump in on that conversation and help us out. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but the private ones crack me up. So the private ones typically will come to me because I'm like, I'm the admin, I'm the head mod, right? And it's always like this veiled attempt of like, make me a mod too. Like they need power to be able oh to enjoy God. themselves. And like, let me tell you how much I am not into that. <laughs> and, we're not, and we're not sitting here saying that this, this is one experience that we've had. I am telling you over that and over this has happened six, seven, 10 times. Oh my like, God at least twice in every single rp that we've had at least where we will have that offer of just make us a mod and we'll fix your rp but i'm not looking for mods like i have not yeah. advertised asking for <laughs> mods in years so it's not like there's anywhere that they could get the and impression they... that i'm looking for mods they just think yeah. i need them yeah and if you write with us you also i think it's very very obvious that we are a tight-knit group and most people in the group um have been around for years like we have people who've been around for for nearly a decade like the the mods but then we have people who've been around for five years or four years or three years or two years or just joined two months ago mm -hmm. like that is that is the span of our people but a lot of people have put in time work and effort into being a part of the group dynamic mm -hmm. and we'll have someone who will walk in a man who will walk in in a month <laughs> and not even wait a week and we'll sit there and be like let me fix everything. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, it's like, it's, it can get really, really frustrating because like, 
once you tell them that you've been doing this for a while and you try to explain to them like, oh, well, we do it this way, this is why we do it this way, da 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 da, like, they just don't hear it. They say, well, I've been role-playing for a decade too, and it's like, that's nice. Don't care. <laughs> don't yeah, care. <laughs> you're on RP, or if there's other ways that you think should be run, absolutely. Join someone or, else. You know, maybe learn how our RPs are run. Like, that's the other thing too, is that these guys don't know. Yep. You don't know when you walk in and you've only been there for a month. You you probably haven't stayed for the course of an event at that mm -hmm. point. You haven't dealt with activity checks. You haven't seen how things are dealt with, uh, like issues, uh, like the dynamics of inter of, of people of interpersonal, yeah, interpersonal people, issues, whether mm -hmm. it's OOC uh, or whether it's in character. You haven't d you've been around long enough to deal with these un and understand these very complex parts of being a mod. Um, so why are you saying that you can be a mod? You yep. don't know how we do it. Or yep. why are you saying it's dumb? And this, and we've certainly had a couple women here and there do the same thing. Come in and sit there and be like, we can, like, start making suggestions or have that entitlement. But the entitlement comes with almost every single man. Yeah. It's, it's the weird thing, like, right? Like, a, some, some women do it too, and, but typically... With women, um, once we explain it to them, they back off and they're done and they understand, right? Um, yeah. And that's just not what happens with men. And it's just weird yeah. that almost every man does this. So, you know, it's just, it does seem like a uniquely male problem, despite the fact and, that women do it too. And Bree says it. It's because it's not about whether or not our system works. It's whether or not their system, our, our system works for them. Mm -hmm. And that's how the world is built. Our world is skewed in a gender in a way that the gender go to is male. Mm -hmm. is, is everything kind of like how the world is built for right handed people, the world is built for men. Yeah. Um, and women have extra hurdles in order to exist in this world. Mm -hmm. And when that doesn't happen, it feels like a different world, which is why we wanted to make it clear that, like, this is why it's a women dominated feel or a hobby because when women are in charge we're not building it for men nope <laughs> or, we're not it, or we're we're not building it exactly the way the world is built for men yeah and i think that i think that men get very shocked at just how collaborative we are really built like they don't they don't understand that there is no win scenario like that, that the way yeah. that you win is by making friends like they like they really cannot process that <laughs> they really cannot um because i don't i think for a lot of these men stepping into one of our role plays is potentially the very first time they've ever been confronted with a space that behaves that way yeah and um and i know that sounds crazy because a lot of these men are like full-grown adults but the way that they talk and the way that they react i really do believe that it's a very different world mm -hmm. um and it is kind of a shell shock which is why we also don't necessarily hold it against them. No. Um, sometimes it's a bit shocking and it took a little while for us to learn how to sit there and go, no, thank you. <laughs> sit down. And then still enjoy the people that they are. Yeah. Um, because as mods, A, you have to learn how to do that. But also you don't want to alienate an RP away from good writers or mm -hmm. people who want to enjoy the hobby, which is why you learn very quickly if this person is going to either adapt or leave. Yeah. And you know right off the bat how they handle the no thank you. Yep. And we do have people that adapt. Like we have we have people that come Absolutely. in and do these behaviors and are like really annoying for their first couple of months or whatever, whatever. And then like at some point they just sort of chill out and they kind of get into the groove and then we're friends and it's all good. <laughs> oh yeah, we have a fantastic we have some fantastic writers currently in our RPs who are male and who have either chilled out or sit there and go, or we're, we're very limited in problem on being a problematic person to begin with, mm -hmm. where they handled the no thank you or whatever that first issue was where it was like that power struggle, sitting there and going, no, and then they, they adapted. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. It yep. just 
doesn't happen. It happens all the time, but it doesn't happen often. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> hey, Amber, welcome. Yeah, I, I can think of situations where it's gone both ways, right? Like I can think of situations where we've had these kind of conversations with people and um, and it's worked out fine and, and they've chilled out and they've, you know, kind of gotten it, you know? And then I can think of situations where we have the conversation and then we have the conversation and then we have it again and then we have it ag again and again yeah. and again and again. And then they finally realize that we're never going to acquiesce to their demands and they bail. You know, um, <laughs> and sometimes I wonder why they hang on so long, like why it took six or seven confrontations, but sometimes it does <laughs> like, cause, but that's another thing. Like I can't imagine if I'm not having fun, why I would stay somewhere, <laughs> but some people will just keep this barrel on through. So <laughs> no, I mean, it's about control, see control issues again. Yeah, I think um, it is. Everything's about control issues. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's that, it's that level of, um, for lack of a better word, mansplaining of how to run our own RP without actually knowing how we run our RP mm -hmm. and that level of entitlement that comes with it. And society has built both of those things up. Mm -hmm. Men are in society. Men are useful for what they can do and provide, um, as far as like providing information, problem solving, all of that is a very male trained thing yeah men are socialized um, to do those types of things and so when you enter uh when you enter a situation nine times out of ten i mean we've all heard that joke and yes it might be sexist or stereotypical but there's a reason why it's true and that is um when you ask someone like when you when women typically ask men for comfort uh the male will try to fix it yeah um and they feel that rps or or other situations in which they don't have much control are the same way. They try to fix it. They try to do action things rather than look at it from an emotional perspective. And that's how our society has brought this up, mm -hmm. which is why it's a sexism issue and not like a all men suck issue. It's the patriarchy. Yeah. And then women can be subjected to it too. Like it's not, it's not just men and it's not all men and da 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 blah, Absolutely. blah, like, but it's, we're talking, we're, we're generalizing, right? So to, to quote the, uh, the great, um, uh, oh shoot, crazy ex-girlfriend, right? Like that song. Let's generalize about men. Like <laughs> that's what we're doing here, right? Absolutely. Um, and I think, and I think another big deal with like these these feelings of entitlement that happen uh, when men join our role plays, and why I really believe that a lot of times this is the very first time that they have encountered such a situation, is because online when you're not when you don't have the man facing you down like okay i'm a very small person i'm five feet tall right um you know <laughs> i'm tiny uh and uh and so you know if a if if a man's kind of like yelling and screaming and hooting and hollering and making a you know big old fuss or whatever then i'm i'm liable to just be like this is not worth it and walk away but online guess what i don't have to i don't have to have all that i don't have to walk away i can it's just text i can argue with them all freaking day <laughs> Yes, so. I think something that's special there too is that the because men find putting their opinions on women and arguing with them fun. Yeah, and so I don't find it fun. <laughs> no, we we like that. It's again that idea of we prefer collaboration, whereas men prefer winning. So having that argument for them is that like, oh yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Like that's what it very much feels like. Yeah, like they think they think that it's it's like a form of connection. I'm like, no, you're just being annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because we want the idea of, oh, here's an emotional connection and they want the power connection. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just not interested in having that. And um, oh, absolutely not. I understand. <laughs> yeah. And so but but online, like I can definitely like put my foot down and, you know, assert myself as like, no, this is my space and I'm running it the way that I want to. And we, um, and that is really shocking for a lot of them. The online aspect of it obviously helps, but what mm -hmm. has also helped and something that I wanted to bring up was that I, I don't know if you felt that there was the same, but I felt that there was a shift when one of our mods changed their name to a gender neutral name. Yeah. Uh, and into a masculine sounding name, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and so when that name change happened, we knew that we could send Shadow to go deal with people who would not bar back down or Shadow wouldn't even like need to be sent. Sometimes they'll, they would just step in. Yeah. And um, as soon as there was like this idea of a more masculine pro possible persona behind something, that changed how the person was arguing. Mm -hmm. That changed how the person was listening. 
Yep. It's the same uh, thing as like the studies that we've that we've seen. I'm sure we've all seen them at, at some point where it's like just changing somebody to a gender neutral or a masculine name on a resume. The resume is exactly the same. Guess what? They get hired. But like Susan or Jessica doesn't get hired. Right. But um, but Glenn gets hired. <laughs> it's you know, it's it's like that. It's like that. Um, you know, if, if the men like because men are assuming that they're talking to men unless being told different. That, yeah. uh, that if they see a gender neutral or masculine name, they don't react to them as if that person is a woman. Yes. So I think that that, that was a very interesting experience to see that, to go from um, all mods having a very fem all mods having fairly feminine names. And you mm -hmm. were, you were gender neutral at that point too, um, when that switch happened. But most of us having very, um, very, sorry, female names, woman names, to then switching over to having a more masculine person or more masculine name and that change in dynamic and power that it did give us really stuck with us. Like, mm -hmm. I think that that's something that people don't know exist. And it is this thing where it's like, no, sexism exists within this realm, even if we're trying to build not a, a non-sexist place, because that, that happens. Things like that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and it still happens. We still know that if, like, we need an authoritarian, authoritarian, like, put down, send in a person with a masculine name. We know yep. we'll get it nine times out of ten, unless there's a respect built, and then the respect will also do it. But we know how to problem solve that way. Yep. And we've done it before. We've done it definitely oh, with absolutely. players that were, we've done it with players where, like, they keep complaining and keep complaining and keep complaining, and the conversation that we're having as mods turns into, like, why is this person still here? They're clearly not happy. They're constantly yeah. complaining. They're constantly causing problems. Like, why are they still here? Like, it's only one click to leave, you know? And so then at that point, it becomes like, okay, how do we do for them the thing that we know they want, which is we have a reason to leave. Like, they're too prideful to leave on their own. We realize that in, at some level. And um, how, do we, how do we manage that? And a lot of times it means having Shadow message them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know no, a lot of the time it will be okay shadow go step into the main chat go deal with this yep shadow go dm this person yeah and it and it's not because shadow's saying anything differently or even saying things more bluntly um there is a little bit of bluntness there because there isn't the rapport built up of like coddling someone but it is also tied of tied with the mas masculine name mm -hmm. definitely that that bluntness with a masculine name suddenly people are like oh yeah, we'll listen to this person. Yep. <laughs> it's just crazy, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. Even though and Karen I, and I have been saying the same thing for three months. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't matter. When they see when they see a new person say it that they don't necessarily like immediately recognize as a woman, they will have a different reaction. You and know? that happens <laughs> and that happens with women too. Yep. We've had women players who have the same like, why are they here? Why do they keep tiptoeing the rules? Why are they being icky this way? Um, it's it's being a disruption. Okay, send send someone with a more masculine, authoritative nature and name in, and that will affect them differently. Mm -hmm. It will. Um, it will. It's it's crazy how it happens. And those are conversations that we have as mods: is when when is the step in a good time to step in? Yeah, like when does this make sense? Yep. Um, so I feel like we've we've talked a little bit about when they when they do leave but what's do you have like a good example or or thing something that we can say for what we notice with the men who do make adjustments and end up sticking it out and um and hanging with us and and being cool about it yeah i think that um that change comes with calming down with playing by the rules that are written and i'm not talking about like the rules of rrp i'm talking about like don't try to take over the conversation. <laughs> not everything is about you and not everything is about sex. Yeah. Um, which is another thing we're going to get into in a little while. Uh, but um, I think that those changes come with taking a chill pill. Mm -hmm. The changes look like ch taking a chill pill, engaging in a conversation, recognizing that um, these are these relationships that we are trying to build within our RP are symbiotic, that you're doing something for me and I'm doing something for you. We're enjoying writing together. We're enjoying building these plots, blah, 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 blah. Um, whereas I feel like when you come off so aggressive and a lot of the times men take the approach of what can you do for me? 
um, part of that calming down and recognizing and fitting in is then also realizing that you provide something for someone else too, and then advertising what it is that you can provide in subtle ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, is I it think cool shipping dynamics. Is it cool plots? Is it yeah. this specific plot? Like that's that's really what happens. Mm -hmm. And I think I think also that it takes men. For whatever reason, um, societal reasons and things like that, it takes men longer to just to feel safe. You know, they, they enter an environment, they assume it's going to be antagonistic, they, they assume there's going to be some kind of like win criteria, and it just takes them a while to actually feel safe. And I think that's when we see men, you know, make that flip and calm down and be like a little bit more normal, um, is when, once they finally actually feel safe in our role yeah. plays. And sometimes that can take a while. Right, yeah, especially you know, if it's their first encounter with something like this. You know what the ultimate sign of someone feeling safe is? What's that? When a obvious cis hetero male starts playing a female character. Yes. Justice. Yes. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> I just sit there and I go, you have been redeemed. And then there's some times where it's really bad because this is obviously like a male playing a female character for the first time. So it very much has some narrative of as she bounced her tits you know <laughs> ran up and down that bounce like boobily like, down the down. stairs <laughs> yeah boobily down the stairs um but <laughs> but the fact that it is happening i take as a little success yeah i do Just too i do too like even if okay so like we've seen a couple of dudes do this where it were the first role play that they're that they're willing to play a female character in and like oh my god y'all they're so bad <laughs> They are definitely like bouncing boobily down the stairs. However, <laughs> the fact that they feel comfortable and safe enough with us to even do that. I agree. That's like a huge win. Like I will it's be happy to read your first attempt of bouncing boobily down the stairs. You know, Absolutely. I wrote I wrote a lot of awful first attempts of the mechanics of, you know, cocks and balls. And it is very embarrassing. Luckily, I did it as a, as a teenager when um, we were all terrible. But I understand, <laughs> like, I understand the awkwardness of the anatomy. So, yep. you know, it's still big kudos, right? Although the best way to, I still love this. This is still one of my favorite moments is, um, I think we had a body swap before the men that were in our RP at the time uh, were comfortable playing women, um, we had a event where bodies swapped. Oh, you're talking about the and one where the characters like literally swapped bodies? Yes, where okay. they literally swapped bodies. I so remember. all of a sudden you were playing your character, but in a different person's body. And it was random. And so we randomized it. it. Random. So so some people switched so, genders or, or ethnicities or all kinds of things because it was yes. totally randomized. So this one, this one writer who is still trying to uh, spread his, you know, legs and trying to figure out and be safe, uh, definitely got a woman. <laughs> and the randomizer spoke. <laughs> randomizer spoke. And it, it became about um, that it should just be Shark Week for everybody <laughs> that week. And... Um, once he at first he very much was like no 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 and then he took a breath and thought it was hysterical and less than a week later he was playing a woman character yep yep for <laughs> real it was literally it was literally like a week and a half after the event ended and he was like i'm gonna try playing a woman i think i can do this <laughs> i think i can do this and it, it was you know very boobly down the stairs but uh it was that like release of just just relax no one here is gonna judge you yeah um, unless you're being an asshole, that's when we're going to judge you. When you're sitting there and telling us we don't know how to run our own damn RP, that's when I'm going to judge you. I am not going to judge you for not knowing how to write a, as a woman, because sometimes I'm like, oh, how do men's bodies work? I don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if this is kind of like the thing, right? Like I, I'm not upset by like accidental sexism from men. Like they don't know no better. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm only upset by like the men that refuse to listen and learn. But so, yes. you know, I'll tolerate it. I'll tolerate some bouncing boobly down the stairs if you're trying. <laughs> so yeah. Um, oh, I love that you, I had totally forgotten about that. I had a hundred percent forgotten about that. That's how that happened. <laughs> I'm so glad you remembered. <clears throat> yeah, I think, and I think um, we had two men at the time, and so the one I was referring to was no, no longer writes with us. Yeah, unfortunately, um, both of them were writing women within the next week. 
Yeah. Like it was really, it was really nice. And I think that like camaraderie of, of seeing somebody else be a part of that conversation really helped out too. Yes, it did. Like they kind of, they kind of both were like, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Okay. We're going to do it. (laughs) It was very cool. (laughs) It was, it was very, very cool. Um, so that's kind of the experiences I have with men. Like we'll get into some more of our experiences when we're talking about don't be this kind of person. Yeah. Um, in an RP, but as far as like the experiences of how as mods we've experienced sexism in the OOC, mm-hmm. um, I mean, we always, you always have those trolls that come in too. I remember one particular troll who thought he was really funny and had dark humor and was just making inappropriate jokes. Oh, like man. that's just yeah. things that are on the internet. You get really sexist people in the internet who are who are reddit not redditors who are 4chaners i mean they might be redditors redditors, who knows i know 4chan was worse than red than reddit so yeah some 4chan Um, boards are awful but you know some of the some of those people who might be like deeply immersed in their own sexism and either know it and are completely okay with it or don't know it at all yeah um or even worse know it and love it i mean <laughs> um, it happens <laughs> it, oh 100 percent, and and we see that with the idea of dark humor so we definitely nine times out of ten when we get trolls or people who are just trying to be edgy they are typically men um they're yeah and then we are gonna get into like writing and the sexism within our writing but this is kind of a crossover of that of there's a very different kind of special when it comes to how men write special characters and how women write special characters. Mm-hmm. Um, which is kind of what we're going to start getting into. So do you have anything else to say about like your experiences with men within RP um, as, as far as out of character stuff? No, I think like we really covered it. Like really to me, like my main gripe when it comes to like the out of character stuff is like, you know, don't assume that I don't know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? And like, when I tell you, hey, you're wrong, I actually have expertise in this area. Like, just listen, like, believe me. Like, that's really that's really the thing that gets under my skin, you know, and just, and men always freaking do it, you know? <laughs> they do. Yeah. And it's, I was gonna say fine, but it's really not fine, that's why we're here. Yeah, I mean, it's not <laughs> fine. Other, if it was fine, we wouldn't be having an episode about it, right? <laughs> So yeah, I think we can segue, I think we can segue into a little bit like the inherent sexism that ends up existing the way that patriarchy affects us. And, um, you know, guess what? It's not all about men where we, we duplicate a lot of these, um, awful hierarchies and awful patriarchy, uh, in ourselves as well. You know, we, us girls, gays, and theys are also guilty. So yeah, I think we can, I think we can get into that. Yeah, and we've said it before, and we'll say it again. We said it during our gender, uh, our gender episode. We said it during our race episode. We've said it just offhandedly. Cis white het characters are the most beloved RP characters. Mm-hmm. They are the prize of all things, and people don't necessarily want to play them. They want to write with them. Mm-hmm. And that like idea of worshiping, finding the prince charming to write your ship with, and that like sort of status in our stories that we have inherently writing, uh, is 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 a consequence of sexism. Mm-hmm. Yep. So <laughs> Dave, I... Dave and Salvatore, absolutely. <laughs> Dave and Salvatore is a big one. Yeah. But I'm just saying, at the Joker. And when I was playing Harley Quinn, trying to find someone who would be willing to play my Joker, there were so many times, especially when I was on indie, where I was playing a lot of male characters, but I, I also really just wanted to play female characters. But um, there was such a such a market for that, like that the male characters were going to be much more loved and adored and paid attention to and, and chosen to be written with than any female characters, canon or uh, OCs. Yeah, both. Characters. Hey, Nikki, welcome. Um, Yeah, especially I think like in when you're doing like one on one role plays and indie role plays and things of that nature, I think you find it especially there. And I'll just repeat a little bit of some of the stuff that I said in the gender episode. If you want the full story, go go find the the gender episode and uh, it's on my YouTube channel. But the short version of the story is that uh, I definitely when I am willing to play male characters especially like white cishet dommy kind of male characters 
I figured out very early that is how to get attention in role play, like very, very early, right? So all I need to do is like if I'm running, if I'm doing role plays, like fandom role plays, I just got to list like, you know, Sam Winchester, right? And Damon Salvatore. And, you know, if I just put those in, in my like list of characters I'm willing to play, all of a sudden everyone wants to role play with me, right? Yep. And we do this, right? We prize that character over all others and yep. and in and in our role play circles like it's all like women or for the most part in these circles it's women but how often do you see people writing lesbians like almost never despite That's the fact so that they got a phone yeah. yeah like so many role players so many role players um are are bi or or lesbian or otherwise sapphic in some way and yet you never see people writing it you see these like um these like gay women writers writing gay male characters and i think in relation to sexism a huge draw from that is that within media we don't have a lot of representation of interesting good female characters so it's just much easier for us to conceive of like well i'll just write a dude like that's just easier for us because that's what we're exposed to in our media i think it is the um inherent self-insert right yeah. I am not saying that every single character is a self-insert. However, you do have an emotional attachment to the stories that you are writing and to the character that you are writing. So you want things like finding happiness and love for this character, for mm -hmm. especially a female character. So Nikki is sitting here and saying um, and said uh, that females make up, writers make up more than half the community. And I wonder how much of this sexism is us almost letting it happen and I'm not sure it's about us letting it happen I think what it is is that we are inherently raised sexist yeah. we are raised that as a woman our job is to find a man and we can be as comfortable with the fact that that is wrong as we want but how many of us were told princess stories growing up how many of us were raised on Disney mm -hmm. how many of us were raised on this idea that finding a man was the most important thing in life yeah and wants to write out those stories yeah and I, but I do think, so, I do think we let it happen a little bit, not in the sense of like, oh, you're bad for letting it happen, but in the sense of we have to do work to try to make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah. And we're fulfilling our fantasies. Like that's what writing is too. Yeah. Whether it's like an, an actual fantasy that you want to have or stories that you like, you want to write the stories that you like. And nine times out of 10, those are going to be love stories. Yeah, especially in role play, especially in the demographic yeah, and everything that we have with role play. That is what we see. We see people wanting to write romance. But think about how many stories, like think about how many fiction stories, whether it be YA or adult fiction, that don't have to do with some romance arc. Yeah, most many... of them, that's the subplot. That's the subplot of almost everything, almost every genre, no matter what it is, even if it's not a romantic genre, there'll be a romantic subplot. Yeah. And that's, and that's what happens. And it happens in our writing, too. Mm -hmm. It is not necessarily our fault. However, we are actively participating in it. We are. Um, and it takes work to not want to do that. It takes work to sit there and be like, I don't want to ship. Well, mm -hmm. then what are you going to write with when 90% of people in the community want to write shipping posts? Yep. <laughs> Especially Absolutely. on indie. Group is a little bit easier because you have a little bit more flexibility. But how are you going to write that in indie? You're not because no one's going to write with you for a long time. They'll say that they do. They'll be like, yeah, sure. I, I'll write with you. And they'll get a few posts in and then they'll be bored and they'll bail, you know, yep. um, because if you're writing just with one other person, then it really is about the relationship of those two characters. And the, the way to keep that going and keep it interesting is for it to be a romance, you know, like that's that's what that is. Absolutely. Yep. Um. And then, <clears throat> sorry. Oh, you're good. Yeah, Nikki's saying um, she won't even read or watch a movie without a romantic subplot. I mean, valid, you know? Yeah, same. I'd find a, it's a documentary at that point. And who wants to watch a documentary <laughs> on Friday night? Ah, unless they're about orca whales, in which case. <laughs> no, I, I think that there is this, um, this is just part of the sexism that exists. And we need to acknowledge it. It doesn't necessarily mean it needs to change. Yeah. Um, because if you enjoy it, there's nothing wrong with enjoying it. But I think that sitting there and then pretending it doesn't exist because we have this idea of, oh, it's sexist or, oh, that's part of sexism in there. And that makes us uncomfortable. Um, 
it, it doesn't have to change, but you do sh- you should acknowledge it. You can't mm-hmm. call it a duck when it's a chicken. <laughs> no matter how much you want it to be a duck, it's still a chicken. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like the we still have to face reality, right? At the end of the day, we still have to face reality, yeah. and and reality is this is what people are are looking for, you know. Um, and then back to your back to the thought about queer and LGBT uh, LGBTQ intersectionalism within our writing. Mm-hmm. Um, you're right, absolutely. We don't we don't see queer women nearly as often as we see gay men. Yep. Or queer men. Yep. Um, the same goes for mass media. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. How many how many people hear about the gay penguins but don't hear about the lesbian penguins? Yeah. Um, or how many people like, you know, I'm thinking something as simple as for my growing up. And I think because I was stalking an old Tumblr blog the other day, I, I got, I got glee on the brain, oh. but how much attention <laughs> the relationship between Kurt and Blaine got versus the relationship between Brittany and Santana. Right. And uh, Brittany and Santana they, happened way earlier in the show, if I recall correctly. They did. Yeah. But it's this idea of, um, the queer community being, being, you know, almost this idea of, of gay men being the forefront of the queer community when that is so not true um, at all. Mm-hmm. And it's, by the way, it's typically gay, gay cis men, not mm-hmm. even trans men. Um, and that's so, that's part of the sexism that exists. It's part of the problematic issue, like the issues that we have with it is that it's this idea of Again, the most important thing it is to be in this world is white and and sh- white and male. Yep. Yep. So and that's sick. that's who ends up getting accepted <laughs> as far as like, you know, what you typically see in writing. Yeah, and like that, if you do see LGBT writing, it's typically a coupling of two white men. <laughs> yeah, and that's who and that's who's uh who, that's whose characters are get interesting mm-hmm. and and who get attention, who gets really who gets attention in mass media when we're thinking about TV shows, but who gets really well developed in other yes. forms of media like literature. Yep. And I mean, that's why I tend to play a, a lot of men when it comes to fandom role plays for exactly that reason. Cause if we're talking about a fandom role play, we're talking about an already established property with characters and all of these things. Right. Yes. So in that situation, then I'm going to go for the character that I think is the most interesting. And a lot of times that's a guy. <laughs> you know (laughs) well and that's and i think it's important to bring up that that is by design Mm -hmm. um there is an amazing article i cannot remember the title of it now but it's about ya literature and why the main female protagonists of ya literature are so boring (laughs) and it's their pants their pants you put on the pants you go have the adventure (laughs) that's exactly what it is is that the consumer of these products are uh, typically women uh, within that same age bra- bracket who are trying to live out the same way that we live out in RP, who are trying to like follow this love adventure and get emotionally involved. And in order to do that, you can't have a well, a well interesting and, and developed woman because then you wouldn't connect with her if you find issues with her. That's the mm-hmm. idea behind it. Yep. Um, and we can look at it from Bella Swan to... Uh, Katniss Everdeen, um, who's at least a little bit more developed than Katniss than, than Bella Swan. Yeah, to Katniss, Elena. Katniss has some. Per- Katniss does have some personality. To Elena from the Vampire Diaries, both the books and the TV shows. Oh God, what Elena personality none. did Elena have at all? The answer is none. She none. had none, and that's because she want you as a woman who was supposed to be watching this TV show and loving this TV show was supposed to step into these the into the, her shoes. Yeah. Um, and, so that, and that you can her. go, so that you can go fuck the hot vampires, right? Exactly, and you know, and I saw that Brie, I think, mentioned um, Grey's Anatomy earlier. If you look at the ear- early seasons of Grey's Anatomy, Meredith Grey is the exact same. Mm-hmm. She has no personality in the first three seasons. Later on, she and gets some, but at first, she doesn't. She does, but that's because the actress fought for it, yeah. and because it became very obvious that it wasn't about the relationships. That really, it was about the relationships, but it wasn't about her, you living through her perspective. It became an ensemble tv show mm-hmm. yeah it but i think about multiple characters i want to go back to elena for a second because elena Sorry, is like yes. the <laughs> example of this happening and us perpetuating sexism within our writing and and that getting popular okay so elena not only has no personality she has no character arc 
like at least um at least uh bella is a different person at the end of mm -hmm. the story and has an arc elena has nothing elena is has tragedy and then she has tragedy and then she has tragedy and then she has tragedy she is a broken tragic girl at the beginning and she is a broken tragic girl at the end and and that's it it's just a series of like awful things that happen to this poor girl like she is literally the definition of a pants character and yeah. and i think i think that uh that bella gets gets way more attention of course because it was a way more popular you know twilight was way more popular but elena is actually the example of this yes there is no there is no change or anything um and and i think that that's also the important thing too is that development when you when you're looking for examples of this in media uh look at specifically not ensemble cast because as soon as you start getting ensemble cast then you start doing the storyline it's no longer about inserting yourself into the storyline it's about following interesting characters so yeah. side characters side female characters actually in modern day media are really well developed yeah, and then the main um, character will be garbage right but then the side yes, characters will be like kind of cool <laughs> it's that self insert mm -hmm. but as you start getting into an ensemble cast it becomes less and less like that yeah. it becomes that every character is well developed which is a change in the last 10 years but still a change <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's something right it's something <laughs> yeah. um but yeah i think that that is that that same thing happens in RP. Mm -hmm. um, that anyone wants to live out that same effect of watching a movie and getting emotionally involved, of reading a book and getting emotionally involved. If you're writing a story, you're going to get emotionally involved. Yep. And you want it to be an interesting dynamic story, which means it needs to be with men, male characters because that's what is considered interesting and dynamic. Yep. Yep. And it, it also ha happens the other way, too. Like, you might have a really interesting, dynamic, um, fun female character, and um, that character is a lot more likely to get ignored by other role players because there's already a glut of female characters available. They don't ha they don't spend a lot of time even looking at them to know. So you just have you have so much competition and um, people are more likely to dismiss your character and assume that they suck, even if they don't. Yes. And I know, I know I've, I've experienced that a, a lot in role plays. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I started coughing. So oh. <laughs> I just didn't want to die on stream. It's fine. Oh, yeah, please don't. That would be really awkward. <laughs> it was the, the men did it. It's fine. They probably, they, yeah, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the, the point, the point with like talking about this is, is like, yes, men do this and this sucks and da da da, but like, we recreate these situations like we constantly are recreating this sexism over and over as much as it hurts us we are over and over recreating the conditions for the sexism to occur so yes, we have to believe that that is how it should be yes anyway. exactly <laughs> Oh, look at Lark! Oh, Lark. Being the head of the game and and giving us our and giving us our transition about Mary Sue. What a beautiful oh. transition sentence, Lark! How did you know that was literally the next the next thing in our notes? <laughs> Female characters get labeled Mary Sue's. If anyone has ever heard this really sexist comment, mm -hmm. uh, we'll tell you exactly why Mary Sue's are um, sexist, Karen. I know yes. you have a lot of opinions on this. I do. So I have a video it's on my channel, a spare room episode that's specifically about this. So if you want like a little bit, um, if you want to like hear like a compact edited version of what I'm about to say, you can go check that out and share it. Please share that. It's I think it's a really important video. So Mary Sue is not a critique, right? So people asking like, is my character a Mary Sue? How do I avoid being Mary Sue? How do I make sure my character isn't a Mary Sue? Dah, dah, dah. Like this is pointless. Okay, these are useless things. It's useless because... This is, Mary Sue is not a measure of critique. Mary Sue is an insult. It, it is. Have you, think about it. Like, when was oh, the yeah. last time you ever heard about a male character being called a Mary Sue? Probably something popped into your head, right? I guarantee that something was in reaction to a female character being called a Mary Sue. Male characters are never called Mary Sues on their own merits. Like, the only time you ever hear a male character being called a Mary Sue is in relation to female characters. So I'll give like the quintessential internet example. People be like, oh, Luke Skywalker is also a Mary Sue or Gary, a Gary Stu or whatever, right? Whatever they say. 
Um, they only say that because people won't shut up about Rey being a Mary Sue. No one said that before Rey was a character in Star Wars, right? So people do not call male characters Mary Sues of their own merit. They just say that in reaction to female characters being called Mary Sues. And the way I know that this is also an insult is because of the history of the word. The way that the word Mary Sue came about was from um, Trekkie zines back in the day, like in the 70s or whatever. I don't remember the exact year. It's in the Mary Sue video. Go watch that. I, my memory is not good enough to tell you. Um, but back in the day, the way that we passed fanfic around before the internet was in zines. So you would go to conventions and you'd pick up these zines for free or for like a dollar or whatever. And they would have like a bunch of fanfic in them that a bunch of the women in the area had written. And of course, these had all of the same things that fanfic today has, like awful self inserts and stupid, you know, tropes and da 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 da, whatever. So one of the authors that was running a particular Trekkie zine published that um, they published uh, this fanfic, and their character was called Mary Sue, and it was intended to make fun of all of the like self insert, you know, type of characters that you see in fanfic, the self indulgent some stuff like this character not only wins the affection of Kirk, they also win the affection of Spock, I think it is. Um, I know it's two of them. I, th I think it's Kirk and Spock. I don't think it's Kirk and McCoy. Anyway, watch the Mary Sue video for specifics. And, um, and th this character also like wins all of these humanitarian awards and they end up taking over the, the, the ship, you know, whatever they call ships in Star Trek. And, uh, and, and yeah, basically they, they win the day and they're the best, most perfect at every little thing that they try. And it was a satire. Okay. It was somebody making fun of their own community, right? It was an insider making fun of their own community and it just freaking took off from there. Now, like there's all these people just going on and on about Mary Sue's when it was really just meant to be like a silly little self critique. And, and so for all of these reasons, Mary Sue is not something you should avoid or worry about or or try to critique because it's just not that it's not that it is an insult for female genre fiction characters period nothing whatever else you think it's not true take some time to unlearn it that's the truth okay that's your that's your short version of the mary sue definition your, your short you know disorganized version <laughs> yeah and then also like if you ever really want to blow someone's mind, if they ever accuse your character of being a Mary Sue or anything like that, or any character of being Mary Sue, just ask why. Mm -hmm. Just sit there and be like, why? And I guarantee you, whatever they will say, uh, you can then either back up with like being like, but this, or this, or just simply say, did you not read it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that will shut people up. Yeah, because anyway. all, all they mean is this character annoys me. But they don't yeah, want to say it. They want to make it sound or, like their annoyance is somehow that. like valid. I don't even think it's that because it's not even like Ray annoys me. It's I just don't like I don't like Ray. <laughs> I don't I don't like the fact that Ray is a girl. Um, <laughs> that's literally what they're saying is I don't like this character. Yeah, which is fine. So, like you don't have to like every character, but you also don't need to have like highfalutin reasons for disliking a character. You can just dislike them. Like it's okay. <laughs> yeah, but then but then their hate isn't justified. And they might be called a sexist. Well, you and know, maybe they are being sexist. Okay. <laughs> maybe they just coded sexist language instead. Yeah, maybe they anyway. are. Like maybe some of the reasons that we find Bella Swan annoying, which I, I did and do. Okay. Maybe it's some sexism living inside me. Like it, that is, that is valid and possible. I just think that she's, she is a pair of pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but hey. She's an underdeveloped. Why I don't like, why do I not like Bella Swan? Because she's underdeveloped. <laughs> because there are so many opportunities that you could, that she could have been developed and chose not to be. That's yep. literally it. It has nothing to do with the fact that she's clumsy or nervous or good at everything or beautiful, but doesn't think she's beautiful. I and mean, all of that don't particularly like it. But guess what? It, that's not what pisses me off about her. What pisses me off about her is that Stephanie Meyer had amazing ability and opportunities to develop her into a cool way and chose not to because mm -hmm. she wanted to market her books to mass media. Exactly. Yep. And that's my <laughs> rant yeah. on Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. But hey, you know, I mean, she, she has some other issues too. I mean, poor lady, she was born Mormon. So, you know, what, what are we going to do? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the whole of, the whole of, uh, Twilight is a wait for me marriage PCA. PCA so. It's true. It's true. <laughs> All right. Very quickly, I also wanted to talk about um, 
you had mentioned it before too as as a describer of um a cishet male character um mm -hmm. but the idea of top dom dynamics yeah with it yeah um and this is one that is very interesting because it is it is something that is also exists in the BDSM community too that it, there is this in, there is this inherent belief that if you are male in a heterosexual relationship you are the top yeah and that go and that takes place in RP as well that they are they're, they're, they're the ones that wear the pants they are the ones that make the decisions they are the you know the more dominant person in bed x y and z mm -hmm. um and it's a doozy <laughs> with that not exist in a dynamic and how other people react to it yeah um i can speak on this because i'm currently in that position i am shipping a dynamic where um the male in the relationship is not the top in the relationship and how characters have been written with that knowledge and how people out of character have handled that knowledge yes has been please explain that Okay, because um, so, so let y'all know from an outsider perspective before Landon gets into it, these particular characters, this is a bedroom dynamic, which means that other characters don't know. So other yeah. characters wouldn't know this is going on in their relationship and that this is how their relationship is. Okay, I wanted to preface that from an outside perspective. Go ahead. Yeah, Landon, no, take it away. that is very important. Um, and uh, things like uh, questioning once it became clear out to out of character people about the in-character dynamic within the bedroom, uh, characters started treating Lucian, who is the who is the male, differently. Mm -hmm. um, questioning authority, questioning manliness within character, um, just started. And and we're not talking about like one person. I'm talking about there was there was a shift, and um, started. I can't even think of like perfect examples at least in character but there was this idea and knowledge and joke that was almost going on in the rp that lucian was not wearing the pants in the relationship mm -hmm. even though that was not in character knowledge um and out of character knowledge was fascinating too the jokes about being worn collars started yep. the jokes about um not, you know, the jokes about him not being as much of a man started. It was all these really micro-sexist jokes that I don't think anyone in our group, because we are a really aware group and not, like, no one is toxic, <laughs> would pick up on except for the fact that it was happening. Mm -hmm. um, that these jokes were being made and that is because we are still conditioned to believe a certain dynamic exists and that the that certain dynamic is the right dynamic even if we don't exist in those dynamics ourselves mm -hmm. and I don't think anybody was doing this on purpose like these no this, it this, was uh, not yeah this metagaming that was happening in in regards to this I don't think it was on purpose I think it was just it like not. It was just like people could not wrap their heads around this character who had been so dominant in their stories and in their plots that this was how you guys were choosing to write the smut, you know? And and so it just it just they just kept they just kept metagaming like over and over and over. Multiple people in multiple threads to the point that like you know, they had to be talked to. They had to be talked to and be like, stop <laughs> metagaming. And they would be like, I'm not, I'm not. He just doesn't trust Lucian. It's like, but why? But why? But why? Why? And it, you know, why and they can't you... answer because we know why. It's because you didn't like the smut. <laughs> yeah, it's questioning. I, oh, there's a good example too. Is that a very powerful person in the RP? Lucian was one of the leaders in the RP. Yeah. He was. He was. I think like, top, basically head bitch in charge. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was. And people wouldn't question him at all. People wouldn't question him at the beginning because he was supposed to be this scary man who kept to himself. And he wasn't scary in like the villainous way. He was just grumpy. Yeah, um, all the time. Then, <laughs> he oh. was super grumpy, and he and he knew exactly what he wanted, and demanded that people treat him right. Like that. That was yeah. like his personality, basically. Absolutely, and that was that. And that's, I mean, very realistic to me. And um, once the relationship started, Cass is a very innocent woman, um, very naive, doesn't know anything, very young. So when that dynamic started. People started treating him like a villain. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Even though his in-character actions hadn't changed, people started treating him with out-of-character knowledge of that. And that's fine. Um, he was exactly happened. as villainous after as he was before, you know, yes. and he was a little bit villainous like he didn't he did some pretty bad things like, you know, he was a flawed person. Right. And the thing was, though, is that they never treated him like a villain until yeah. all of a sudden he was the bottom in the bedroom. Yes. As soon as he came to the bottom in the bedroom, he was he was villainous um, and then also was uh, people started questioning his power. Yeah. Like, people would start saying things and doing things uh, that they wouldn't be doing before and not think of the consequences because the consequences wouldn't have changed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> yep. They, they just didn't see him. They just they just didn't see him as somebody that was a threat anymore, even though he yeah. was exactly the same amount of threat as he was before. Exactly. And that is part of the – that's part of how we – interpret that sexism is that as soon as something is is not adding up in our brain um there's a change in how we deal with a character whether we know it or not and i 100 percent agree with you i don't think it was ever intentional i don't think it was malicious mm-hmm. i don't think there was any even the, and we know that some of the people that have done it weren't even aware that they were doing it yeah um yeah, like they, they were, were shocked they were shocked to hear they like, that they were hurting y'all's feelings that. Yeah, like I were... haven't done that. Mm-hmm. And then, like, we'd show screenshots, and they'd be like, "Oh, yeah, no, I did that, didn't I?" <laughs> yeah, like some of the people, they would be shocked. They would be shocked to hear that, like, they were that they were even doing it. They would be shocked to hear that they were hurting your feelings, like things like that. And it's like, well, here's how we know. Here's a series of events with dates, and it's like, oh, <laughs> right, okay, <laughs> um, yeah. So it's it it's an interesting, um it's an interesting part of that sexism of, of who is in charge, both sex, like in the bedroom, but also seeing submissive out of bedroom men is yeah. very rare in our piece. Mm-hmm. Um, seeing that role being taken on is something that doesn't happen very often. No. Um, and that's because again, we are told that men are supposed to be a certain way mm-hmm. and want to play out that way because a it's popular but also b because it's why would you like it's this idea of why would you have the opportunity to play pa- a powerful character and then not and then give up that power so why would you give have the opportunity to play a masculine character with this inherent power of being male but then give that masculinity up yeah um, and it takes a while. It takes. It, we've seen. I've seen players take a while to start embracing those kinds of characters, mm-hmm. the really strong women characters and the really um, more feminine male characters. Yeah. And the uh, thing is, and the thing is, though, is is like, if you if you give somebody like I think you can have like a really feminine or submissive male characters be popular, but they seem to only be popular if they are pale paired with the typical, you know, dom guy as their significant other, right? So so seeing yeah. any sort of like adjustment to that dynamic, I do think throws people for a loop. And and one thing that I uh, that I have to say here as well is that a lot of us that are in like um the role plays that me and Landon are running have been role playing for a long time. So we're going to be doing yeah. some things that are not typical just because we're bored of the typical. <laughs> <laughs> so you know we, we do push these those buttons <laughs> like, like we, well, we tend okay. to have these things that are not seen as much not because we're like better than everybody else or whatever Absolutely. like it's just that we've been role-playing for so freaking long and a lot of us are in our 30s like that's really yeah. that's all it is <laughs> I'm trying to think I'm like I I think that this is the first time that I've played a character like Estelle who mm. is another character that's currently being played who is who is a um authority she's uh, she has a, a mass amount of authority she's one of the lead people in the ship uh she's very smart very bright very very much like a man who would be in charge of things but as a woman mm-hmm. and playing that strong independent i'm focused on my job nothing else woman is very new for me and i'm nine ten years in with this group or nine years in with this group and d- decades in it with writing hmm and it's still a very new thing. So it is, it, yeah, we're not experts. We're not sitting here and being like, this is how you should be writing. It's, we've written everything else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing bad about what's popular. It's popular for a reason, right? Yeah, 
yeah and i mean that's that's something that naomi and i have talked about too is that even though that this woman is very strong and independent on her own um and is like like i said third third in charge she's navigational officer on the ship um people still want to ask her about lucian i did it (laughs) yeah no and people do people have approached me with plots as uh where the main point of the plot is that she's lucian's ex-wife oh well i didn't do that um, i didn't do that mine was like a very oc sexism (laughs) absolutely not but i'm saying that's out of character sexism yeah that has happened in our rp and Mm -hmm. in character sexism happens as well and people wouldn't even notice that Mm -mm. that's the kind of sexism that we're talking about exists yeah. That's the sort of thing that we have a strong female character who is referred constantly to by as her ex her ex husband's wife, yeah. like that's that's how she's being referred to. Mm-hmm. So it just is one of those things where it's like, oh, once you notice it, it is everywhere. You might not think that it doesn't affect you because you don't have any men in your RP or your men are really chill; they've passed the vibe check or whatever. Or you're just writing with a guy or or other people. It still exists inherently in our writing. Yep, it does. You can't get away from it. You can't even if you get rid of all of the men in your in your role play world, you will still have sexism. We I think still, that's really that's the main point we're trying to make. And we still recognize that even though Karen did try to get all rid of all the men, um, we still needed men. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Thank Naomi for remembering those penises. Um, <laughs> so for for y'all that don't know, we had a role play before that I I thought we were gonna have like all vagina havers, right? Like there was gonna be no penis havers in the role play. That didn't mean there there weren't genders or whatever. Like I don't know, I didn't get that far to work all that out. Okay, I just was like everybody's gonna have a uterus and a vagina, whatever. And I got told about how dumb that was because it was really dumb. <laughs> I was like, Karen, no one's gonna join your all female role play, and I was like really yeah and apparently I was like, Wait. We're sexist <laughs> yes no one would do that but it's true um, though it's true <laughs> the unfortunate truth of our situation but i also think um on to speak on that very quickly oh there was something i was going to say and i lost my thought no it was really a good thought. i bet it's it was fine. a really good thought it. it was it was about mr oh no, oh, no. yeah i got it now we have said okay. this joke so much in on this stream that it's an inside joke at this point this is the last time you're allowed to explain it if you don't get our jokes listen to all our streams that's all i'm gonna say (laughs) oh my god landon there's like 48 hours or something crazy like that of content of this stream you You can't tell people that you need the youtube revenue it's fine (laughs) (laughs) all right so yeah so that i won't explain it anymore (laughs) fine so we've been talking about the yeah. So I think that's everything that we that we see in our um, in our RPs as like inherently sexist head and how we write things. Mm-hmm. Do we want to move on to the creep factor? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so if you're still listening at this point and um and you're a guy or you're somebody that's like, oh my god, I've 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 done these these sexist things before. First, I want to say congratulations. Um, thank you for for tolerating all of this uh, all of this bullshit. <laughs> And second, not, it's not bullshit. It's education. Okay, well, thank you for tolerating this uncomfortable education. I guess that is more accurate. Um, so what what we want to get into next is some of those specific like creep behaviors that we've seen, and women do these sometimes too, but men like freaking always do it. You know, as everything else like that we've said here, and and we want to just kind of detail them and go over like what you can do differently how to not be one of those guys to where you have to join like six different role plays before you finally figure it out and don't like in open mouth insert foot you know um because that's not comfortable (laughs) for anybody so we're hoping that this next section saves you guys a little bit of time and pain (laughs) so yeah what's our first one um don't hyper focus on one person or Mm. one partner Mm -hmm. um i think that that's something that people fall into is that when men join um they start this idea of oh this person will write with me so i will only write with this person yep Um, and then on one on on a one-on-one um thing that's that's okay like for indies it would be weird if you were only reblogging one person um but for but for like group dynamics it sends off a lot of red flags yeah and it looks really weird and everyone notices and it's just awkward so 
Oh, go ahead. If you don't think we're, I was just going to say, if you don't think we're noticing, we're noticing. And not just the mods, and not just the mods, like everyone's (laughs) noticing. Everyone's noticing. (laughs) So it's just weird. Um, And one thing I would like to say in regards to this, like the specifics that we see at Manifest and where it gets actually really bad and uh, and mods end up needing to step in. Most of the time, this, this situation just sorts itself out, you know, but there have been some situations where us as mods have had to step in. And typically what happens is because we allow people to create as many characters in our role play as they have time to, to actually write. So people can have like three, four or five characters and that's totally fine and normal for our role plays. Um, so where this starts to actually impact the role play as a whole and mods end up needing to step in is like somebody will start shipping all of their characters with this one other person's characters, right? They might not even plan it. It might just happen. But like they'll have four characters that are all shipped with this other person's four characters. And so what ends up happening is that these eight characters get like so intertwined that those characters end up not being able to do anything else except for yeah. role play with each other. And it turns into like, if this is happening with, with two people, like if you want to plot with this one of those eight characters, you end up having to plot with like both of the people instead of the one because they're so ridiculously intertwined. So if you feel yourself starting to get like really super involved with one person like this, then my recommendation would be make sure that you're shipping with more people than just that one person so that you can see there is value in other people and you don't need to hyper focus on them. Yeah, and I think there's also a um, something that I want to add that we spoke about last week. But uh, if you are also being if if your partner is being possessive mm-hmm. of your ships too so if you are trying to ship with somebody else but and maybe that character doesn't exist and your if your immediate reaction is to then if you already have four ships with them and your immediate reaction is to offer to make another character to ship with them uh-huh don't do it. <laughs> yeah. So if, they're, if they've like gotten their feelings hurt about something that's coming from a place of jealousy, don't try to fix it. They need to fix the jealous feeling they're having inside. It's not your responsibility to make them feel less jealous. That's how they're able to like get in and control you. Yeah. And they, and so, I don't think they're doing it on purpose. It's just that this is how men are socialized. And so this is what happens. Yeah. And also like just check out your own possessiveness if you're shipping with someone uh we're all capable of like really being like oh i love this person i love writing with this person i love these characters unclench Mm -hmm. let yourself like let your partner write with other people trust that they're just as engaged in the ship that you are and that you just need to keep going with it yeah um but don't continue to make characters for each other and if someone is making characters for you recognize that as a red flag yeah, like if they're it, making multiple, right? Like some yeah. is fine. I'm right? not talking about one. I am talking mm-hmm. about you have three partners and all three, or you have three ships and all three of those characters were made specifically for you. Yeah, like that's that's overwhelming for a group RP and not necessary. Um, Nikki yeah. has like this really amazing story that I want to read yes. here. This is like, whoa. Um, I'm sure you saw the second, the moment that I read it, uh, Nikki, because I think my eyes did a thing. <laughs> Um, so she says, I was in a server three or four years ago where the female mod had 16 lady characters and she would make a new one for every new male character that joined while shoving every new female character completely out of play. Oh my God. So this person literally made a whole server so that they could find a boyfriend. That's what I'm reading here. Like, I don't, I I mean, that's what I'm reading. I'm just saying that's ridiculous. That's like next level of what I'm talking about. (laughs) God. Uh, yeah oh maybe mary sue is sexist but okay can we talk about pick mishas yeah i think your example of who you're talking about there that's definitely a pick a pick me um wow holy crap (laughs) uh they just want the whole the whole gender every single man (laughs) all of the men's yeah wow (laughs) i don't think i've ever seen anything quite that extreme but also like i just would i'd be like everyone's shipping with her Why yeah I let me I, ship with someone else yeah i think i would leave instantly like the second i realized yeah. that was going on i think i'd be like bye the second i realized that someone had 16 characters i would just be like actually um 
no thanks <laughs> i mean who has time to fully flesh out 16 characters i i, I don't understand <laughs> or who keeps up with writing 16 characters to the amount that i would pre i would prefer my ships have attention that's true i no, i wouldn't do it i couldn't do it that's yeah. too much overwhelming so <laughs> yeah don't fo don't hyper focus on one partner um and then i also think that this is a little bit of a call out but also a, really a just like shout like a call out to a lot of men who do this um don't hyper focus on sex threats yeah i get it sometimes a smut scene is really fun to write and if you're really into the ship then being able to like write it out is really nice especially if there's character development happening mm -hmm. um and let's be real it's just fun like it's fun it's fun yeah, to write smut, fun. you know? Oh, I love it. Oh my god, there was a... Naomi and I just literally wrote, wrote a smut, smut thread that would not end for days. <laughs> but we're like, it's so important, but it won't end. Um, <laughs> but um, if every single thread needs to turn sexual, yeah, or every single thread and every single character interaction is about what your character what this opposite character can do for their character in a sexual way um it's creepy yeah and it happens a we lot had, we had that happen um i can think of a particular situation where like if yep. they were if this person was doing a thread with one of their male characters and any other female character if it didn't turn into smut then the chances of them writing with that character again drop to zero. Like, they just literally wouldn't. Like, once they realized that smut was never going to happen um, for them from a particular character, they would hit you up for other characters instead, you know, and try those. Um, it was just, that was the only, one and only thing they were there for. And yeah, it was real weird. Which is fine. If you're here for smut, awesome. Like, that's great. If you like writing smut, that's fantastic. You do you, boo. Um, I enjoy it. I, for me, it's a necessary part of writing and dynamic just because I find that a lot of character development happens during sex scenes, mm -hmm. but, um, I But you do other really scenes too. Like yeah, your characters have conversations scenes. too. <laughs> and it gets creepy when uninvited yeah. things turn sexual. Yeah, when like uh, somebody, when somebody's like, I want to, I want to do a thread between these two characters because you're playing my character's boss. And you think that they're going to, like, talk about work or get up to some work hijinks or something. And then all of a sudden they start flirting with your character. And it's like, this isn't what? This isn't what I thought. This I thought we were doing a work thread. <laughs> yeah, this isn't, what I, this isn't what I signed up for. And it it happens. Like, and it's it's very alarming. Um, and it takes you back. And it, you sit there and go, oh, God. Um, and it, I think this particular situation that was really, really bad, I think... Um, was even worse because the person didn't play female characters. No, not really. Um, so they their first four characters were all very, very cishet white men. Well, no, they weren't all white. Power. They weren't all white, but they, they were, were all cishet right. men. They were all cishet men. Yeah, of they power. they were good at writing different ethnicities. Eth ethnicities. It was just a gender right. issue. Yes. <laughs> that was my that was my mistake. Yeah. Um, but they were all, but I think that that was the, also the important part that I wanted to, like, they all had power. Yeah. Um, and they all, like, and that's, like, that's cool. Those are dynamics. I am here for some of those dynamics, but it, it does make it for a very hard time to sit there and want to write with somebody um, who's going to turn everything sexual. Yeah, it's, it's really, um, really yikes. <laughs> it, it's everything about a sexual power dynamic. And it happens. Like the oh, this example that we're thinking of is one really bad example, but we've I've seen it done a couple of times. Mm -hmm. We've um, had milder examples too, where it's like it's not that milder. big of a deal, but you just see it. And and most of the time, like it doesn't become a thing that the mods even have to step in. Like most of the time, it's just whatever, and people are having fun, and who cares, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um. Like we're not here to try to make sexism disappear from roleplay. I don't even think that's a possible thing. Um, oh. so, no, it's, you know, role play will be the last thing that's affected by sex. Like it will, that'll, that'll be, you know, yeah. that's not where it's going to start. That's not where the movement is going to start for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nikki, I'm um, so sorry you're going through that situation. I'm, I'm, I'm reading what you're, what you're going through. And yeah, I do think that sexism is probably, sexism is probably at the root of like what you're experiencing and what you're talking about with that particular player. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but, that's, um, that's one of the situations. Yeah, and I just wanted to, again, bring this up in case you find yourself falling into that trap. Um, how to not be a creep. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, again, we talked about this in the beginning, but arrogance towards the rules and disrespect of the power system. Yes. You come in, like, uh, we are not here. We're not mods that like to be, think that we're like high on power and holier than thou. And we're the mods. So you have to listen to everything we say. Like, I yeah, really hope you don't. don't. Like, if you're confused it. about something, like, ask. Like, we want to help you understand. Absolutely. You know? And we 100% will sit there and, and take uh suggestions mm -hmm. and explain to you if we deny your uh suggestions or sit there and go we'll, we'll explain why yeah. we'll sit there and be like it just doesn't work for we've tried it it just doesn't work with our system mm -hmm. or or this that or the other thing or we have no way to we have no way to track it or all these things like we will give you reason and explanation we'll not just shoot you down yeah that's right um, we don't do we don't do that <laughs> so we try really hard not to be like have a power system However, there is a hierarchy uh, that is at play. There mm -hmm. are mods. There is an admin. Uh, there is, if an situation happens uh, and someone says something and they are a part of the mod team, there's still that power dynamic at play. Yeah. Um, it's still really awkward. It's like, it's still super awkward when someone tries oh, to like, is. when someone tries to like power play on the mods. Like it's, it's weird. Okay. And that's what I was going <laughs> to say. Like, don't don't do it <laughs> <laughs> don't or like or like get to know us first like i'm i'm very open okay like i'll become your friend real fast if you're nice and chill you know and most of our players will probably attest to that like I, i'll i'll befriend i'll befriend most anybody like um much to probably land in chagrin sometimes <laughs> Um, <laughs> I don't like anybody, so it's fine. <laughs> um, so like, it doesn't take much. Like, just hang out with me for a couple of months, and then you can kind of like talk to me however you want, and I'll and I'll be chill and cool, and it's whatever, you know. But um, but like it, like when you do this immediately before you've done any work to establish any kind of social bond with me like i'm not gonna like it it's just gonna make me think like wow what a jerk why why is why is this person so against being friends with me why do they want me to hate them so much you know yeah and <laughs> so, like, don't do that um, and and just sitting there and and um like not listening to the rules yeah not not respecting our positions on where we are and stuff like that like and i'm not even saying like sitting there and being and and doing so, like Suggestions. I'm more referring to questioning everything, questioning why things are the way they are, but to a mass scale and being and being aggressive about it, not curious. There's a yeah. difference between curiosity and aggressiveness. It's like sea, it's like sea lining, sea lining, right? Like they're like, but why? But why? And you can tell. Like, okay, I've said this. I said this like a gajillion times. But people are very empathetic. They can tell when you're being genuine and when you're not. So it's like it's like yeah. when people ask why. And they don't they don't want to know why they just want you to change it <laughs> it's like yep. when people say things like you're not listening to me and it's like i'm listening to you i just don't agree <laughs> it's that that's the kind of energy we're talking about yes yes absolutely um erica says that you're a great friend i said you were fine i thought it was funny so uh -oh. I, just to, yeah, I just needed <laughs> oh, to bring it up i didn't catch i didn't catch the joke i didn't understand it was funny <laughs> I'm okay, I guess. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Who's Karen? Um, Thank you, Jane. That is the energy I want you all to have. I'm nobody, really. Like, don't, don't even. <laughs> Mom. Oh, did the thing. Anyway, moving on before Karen yells at me. Wow. Let's um, leave that. Let's leave that in the past. <laughs> the other thing that kind of goes hand in hand with this particular thing, but I just, none of you are slick. Okay, <laughs> this is a rant that I have to start. start okay, because go for it. Everyone needs to hear this, but especially the men. You are not slick. Also, the mods are constantly talking. <laughs> constantly talking. Which means that if you're trying to manipulate one of us, we all know. <laughs> we all know yeah. when games are being played. Yeah. <laughs> like, we do it. So when a man comes in uh, or... A new player comes in and, and tries to manipulate a situation, especially in the DMs. Um, we know. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and all of us, all of us together in our hive mind, are coming up with the response to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's <laughs> like. Just and I don't, of... and I don't mean that we're like, and I don't mean that we're like sharing y'all secrets no, or shit no, no, like no, no. that. You know, like that's not what I mean. But what I mean is like, is is if you're doing that, 
and the, the mod that you're talking to starts to get suspicious, the first thing they're gonna do is screenshot that shit and send it to us and be like, is this weird? This seems weird, <laughs> you know? And, so like, don't guess, try that. <laughs> and I guess I should definitely separate with sitting there and being like, there's a different, we know how to be, we know how to separate being friends and being mods. Yeah. So if <laughs> I am talking to you as a friend, I promise I'm not sharing your screenshots. I'm not doing anything like that. Yeah, like if that's not what we mean. <laughs> with a mod problem or a mod issue yeah that's when we're sitting there and hive minding because <laughs> yeah. that's our job we're supposed to be doing that um if it's just like a you and i are talking i promise i'm not telling anyone that your favorite color is pink yeah I, i'm not but it is <laughs> <laughs> but it is <laughs> just to let everyone know i'm um, just kidding <laughs> but yeah so it's it is uh and that is my thing that I think that people don't realize. <laughs> yeah, and I think people that... I think people really don't realize that. Like, we have had situations where we've had somebody give a completely different story to one mod than they gave to the other mod. And it's yes. like, do they not... Do they like, not think what? we're not talking? <laughs> like, what, why would you do that? We're going to find out. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Maybe not immediately, True. but at some point, we are. Because we are always talking about this stuff and collaborating about this stuff. We're gonna know. Um, and also, it takes a really special amount of practice to get good at manipulating over text on computers to people that you barely know. Mm -hmm. um, it takes it takes practice, and it takes a long time, and am I kind of good at it? Maybe, but that's just because I'm a villain. It's fine. Um, <laughs> well, so wait, here's the thing. <laughs> Everybody thinks they're better at it than they actually are. Nobody's actually good at this, okay? No like, one no it. one is. <laughs> No one is good at it. Sometimes you can get a person on a bad day in which they don't pick up on it. Fine. But I guarantee you, as mods, we've kind of they prepared will ourselves. Uh, we've prepared ourselves for that happening, which means we're expecting it to happen, which means when it happens, we just go, there, there he is, Brian, right there. Thank <laughs> you for proving my point. <laughs> yep, pretty much, so, pretty much. Don't manipulate. Yeah, just don't, like, just be real. Just like, is it don't the... And I don't know. I mean, I, maybe other role plays like this type of manipulation is required to to like survive. I don't freaking know. I don't join any of people's other people's role plays anymore. Like, um, you know, that is probably the one most elitist thing that I do and will say. Um, but like, the, this is the thing. This is the thing. Like, you're not going to penetrate seven, eight years of friendship. You're just not. Like, you, it's just not possible. Like, when you've known somebody for as long as we've known each other, no one's gonna come in and jack that up. And if you think you're going to, like, just, Bye. like, just, just <laughs> stop. Like, it's just role play. There's so many other role plays out there. Just go join another one if you're not happy in ours. It's fine. I promise we will not have our feelings hurt. Like, it's okay, yeah. you know, if we're not for you. It doesn't even mean that we have to stop being friends. I have plenty of people that I'm friends with that have left our role plays because the role play didn't work out. That's fine. It's really not a big deal, you know? Um, yeah, exactly. It's it's really not. And I think that also to, to expand on this is that the manipulation doesn't just start and stop with the mods. No. Uh, we can also tell because we've been doing this for so long and because when you're in a mod position for other people like who are who are trying to get advice from this, um, you start to learn the signs of what it looks like for someone else to be manipulated. Mm -hmm. You see what it looks like to see someone manipulate someone else mm -hmm. um, and how that dynamic appears in an RP. You can see it. Um, and it's bright as day for people who are looking. Yep. And um, that's part of it. So, like, just don't manipulate. Be upfront and honest. <laughs> yeah. Just because be real. We, because we see you. Because, yeah. like, that's the thing is that we see it. Yeah. And I think for I think for a lot of people, so one caveat to this, I think for a lot of people, they don't know they're doing it, right? Okay, so they don't they don't necessarily know that they're doing it. Um, this is just their their modest their their you know normal mode, uh, and they don't realize until it's kind of too late that they have been manipulating people. Um, but you know, there's there's no day like today to stop. So if you're listening to this and you're being like, oh shit, I did that. Oh my god, I did that. Like, just now you know. So when it's happening, recognize that it's happening and take a step back, you know, yep. and, and it will. And if this is your normal mode of operating, like it is for a lot of men, then it's going to take practice. You're still going to slip up. That's OK. Like good, good and normal people are going to give you a bunch of chances. So it's OK. Don't stress. Just 
try to work on it. Oh, yep. what's Nikki saying? Yes. Um, I literally have a temporary stall out of accepting female characters every few months because when there's even one more girl than guy, shit turns into nonstop drama. Oh my god, I'm so sorry yep. that happens to you, Nikki. Well, what happens when the girls start hooking? <laughs> well, that's what should happen. Where right? are the lesbians? <laughs> yeah, I'm so confused. Are there no gay men? Okay. Um, <laughs> hey, we used but to have no. to do the same thing when when we oh, didn't really oh, know how to handle yeah, this situation. Not, that so... was not judgment. That was just me being queer. That's fine. <laughs> that's just me being just yeah. being like, where are my lesbians? We've handled that situation that way um, before in Absolutely. the past. Uh, yep. and, uh, and, and Nikki, I, I have every confidence that someday you're going to be at a point where you don't have to do gender locks anymore and you can, you can handle it in more like social pressure ways. It is possible. I promise. It just takes a lot of freaking practice. <clears throat> oh, there's only one lesbian ship in the server. I, I know you got a lot of people in your server. You need more, you need more, but yeah, everybody does. We, everybody needs more lesbians. The, there are, there are bands happening. There should be, there should be more lesbians. That's Tell them right. that's in witch trials and that's why um people were hung most of the time it's because they were in lesbian relationships a lot of times people. yeah honestly <laughs> stop, stop about those romantic ships and just try not to die <laughs> um final the final um type or final red flag i think that i want to just touch on mm -hmm. is the i need praise oh, person yeah we all want to get praise we all want to see our name our ships being talked about our, our characters being talk, talked about uh, for us it is now turned into emojiing posts i am getting very addicted to people emojiing emojiing my posts um, <laughs> they're so fun like, to yeah. see i need to practice doing it more but they're they're so fun I need to, to see it, i need to do it more but i i love i love getting it and watching it and it makes me so happy um so i i understand the the want for praise we want to be told we're good at things but there's a specific type of red flag when it comes to typically men in rps who need to be praised for everything yeah everything for posting for um for coming up with an idea for for walking for typing for being in the oc chat like there it comes to a point where where people need they need to like feel special um not even in character special but out of character special mm -hmm. uh and it's it, it doesn't last it's exhausting it's it's exhausting for us to try to mitigate that it's exhausting watching you and i'm sure you're exhausted asking for constant praise um but also it's it's exhausting because praise doesn't last mm -hmm. it, it doesn't because it's just going to be one more thing that you do or um, people are going to stop praising you for doing the same thing over and over again. We don't, we don't like celebrate each other for our ability to walk, even though we were celebrated as, you know, a year and a half years old, a year and a half old to be able to walk. Mm -hmm. Like you, mm -hmm. the levels and higher of praise that you get, the harder it is to be praised. And um, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. So like, if that's what you're searching for, don't look for other people to do that emotional labor for you. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that in, in our role plays, what ends up happening a lot of times, because we do pr spend a lot of time talking about each other's characters and ships that we're enjoying, um, that's something that I, I think is important to maintaining like a, a good positive, you know, uh, a good positive uh, space for role play is that people see that and men in particular, it like triggers that little that little jealousy monster inside of them. Oh, someone's getting praise. I want to get praise too. I want to get the most praise. The pra praise is now a currency that I would like to acquire. You know, like they get like that and um, and that's when it becomes not fun anymore. Like it's not fun to praise you when you're constantly asking for it or constantly doing the work and praising yourself anyway. <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's it's just like, if you just write well and frequently, the praise will come like we're doing it all yeah. the time so yeah. you know if, if praise is needed for you, you to role play then i don't think people are going to stay interested in role playing with you yeah and i i guarantee you the more you praise yourself the less people will praise you yeah <laughs> like, I like you got it you got it covered you don't need me you're fine <laughs> yep it's fine <laughs> um Oh yeah, yes. Laura has a Laura has a good comment. I think that we can we can mention as well. Um, can we shout out? Uh, this is for everyone, but see it more with men. Like everything we've been talking about today. 
Um, it's super rude and weird to conflate the out-of-character writer with the character they're writing. Yeah, I definitely think that um, that I've seen more so with men, like using RP to look for a girlfriend more often yep. than I've seen like the other way around of women using roleplay to look for a boyfriend. You know, I do think male RPers fall into that a lot more often and really struggle with understanding like love on that role play level versus like out of character love <laughs> like they don't see them as separate things although most role players do keep those things very separate yes do you know what i'm really excited for what one day we will have an rp where a straight heterosexual or yeah that's the same thing whatever yeah male and another straight white male will ship with one another and it won't be weird we haven't had that yet that's one thing that has not excited. happened i'm very excited for the day that that happens i agree I'm very excited because i think that will be the day where i am fully convinced that they have been converted and they're not doing something creepy <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometimes we, it's well, really hard sometimes it's really hard to separate mm -hmm. for me at least when i'm writing smut with a uh with someone that i know is a male mm -hmm. um even if my character our characters are gender swapped or whatever sometimes it's really hard for me because i'm just like oh man well, we've had so um, many bad experiences right so it's so yeah. like you're constantly asking yourself like um are they taking this as an in and out of character way are they understanding this is just in character like like they're constant you're constantly thinking that because we've had so many bad experiences it's hard yes. to drive those thoughts away even if the guy in question has not actually given us a reason to have those thoughts sorry dudes the other dudes before you ruined it like and yeah. that happens for sure we have the nicest guy who writes some of the best smut in um atlantis right now and i <laughs> can't <laughs> no it's not that i can't i uh it just for me even him like even though we've known each other for like a year and a half at oh, this but point he's I'm so just cool like, that's such a shame I know it's and it's great and he's fantastic but for me that that's just where I'm at like I will totally do it and I have because we had a ship together but it is still that anxiety of it doesn't matter how well I know them unfortunately because of that bad experience that will continue to happen trauma trauma has fucked your brain yep, <clears throat> yep. yep. Um, oh <laughs> exactly. Nikki oh Nikki don't worry about spending your points on a question like that just ask the poll is like a poll feature inside Twitch I'll refund those points after after the stream so that you get those back um, but Nikki has a question. In terms of sexism, what is one thing that you saw in RP that you would 100% leave without a word? Oh, have you ever joined an RP and saw something like so sexist that you were like, bye? I can't think of a time that I have. It's been really hard since we run our own RPs and yeah. kick people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we don't kick people. We typically manage no. them out. We very rarely actually kick somebody. I think that if I... Um... Hmm. yeah it looks like it looks like some people Found in chat have some good answers but i can't think of one for me Found, i i don't think i've ever experienced it but what's something that would make me leave is i saw that there was an issue with boundaries being crossed so if someone said uh my trigger or squick is non-con and a uh and I guess that this is just a mod thing in gen or not a mod thing. I think this is just a player thing in general. And I don't know if it's sexism, but if someone was allowed to get away with that, either because of the character's gender or because of their gender as a player, um, that would cause me to leave. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I like um, us using their gender as like an excuse to cross boundaries. Yeah, that would be pretty yeah. awful. That he's a powerful male. So, of course, he's going to do that. But no one would report it. Like, maybe that's not something that they wanted to write. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, which I think, like, yeah, that happens in real life, but so, but this is fiction. So mm -hmm. we get to decide what's actually real and not real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay, maybe in real life, like, you wouldn't get a choice on if something was non consensual or not. I mean, obviously you wouldn't because that's what it, what non con means. Jane but, <laughs> but in writing, as the, <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, but in writing, we get the, oh, yeah, go ahead and read Jane's, Jane's point. You're good. I said if the entire mod or office uh, of T, uh, sorry, mod or officer team was men. Mm. And the first, I think that actually in itself yeah. would send me a red flag. I'd probably leave for that I, reason alone. I would leave but too. Then extends uh, stands on it as, and their first voice chat, voice chat, they opened the meeting with which women's voice sounded like she had the best. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely leave. I would leave then, but I would probably actually leave before that if I saw only men were running it and no women on the team. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, I would actually leave if there was no women on the mod team. If it was um, like all, it was. 
yeah Mm -mm. just because they don't have the lived experience of sexism that it's not even on their on their radar they wouldn't i would like how would they ever know it was happening they couldn't like they couldn't know you know yeah yeah and jane oh yeah jane there was no there's no shame that just for me i'm just like oh yeah no that would be that would be it Mm mm-hmm um, Nikki, you can totally name a pinata. If you look at the bottom of what you're of what you can see here, you can see the different types that are in this garden right now. I'm still building this garden, so I've only got the flutterscotches and the gemelians. But if you want to name like a flutterscotch after you, tell me what color. I've got blue, red, yellow, and purple right now. So whatever color, and I'll name it Nikki, and then we can just use also, that. I feel like I cut you off, Karen. Was there something you were going to say? I apologize for doing that earlier. I don't remember. <laughs> Okay. Cool. <laughs> um, I'm gonna let's give Nikki a, a few minutes to answer what I said. I, I is there anything yeah. else? I think we basically reached the end of everything that we wanted to say today. Um, yeah, I think that that's that's all I had. Um, again, I think that this is this is a problem that is bigger than us. It's not necessarily something we can control. It's not something necessarily that the world is ready to try to change. Mm-hmm. Um, these these implicit biases that we have inside of ourselves and our inherent thoughts and beliefs are um they're not going away um unfortunately and Mm -hmm. uh the best thing you can do is call things out um don't be afraid to speak to your mod team if you see sexist things happening if you have issues like that i had with that naomi had with lucian um as far as like because of something shocking about the character, you feel like something is suddenly being treated different because of their gender related. That's a valid thing. And most mod teams will listen to it. It might not solve all the problems because you can't control what other people write and think, um, but at least bringing it up and making the people aware, communicate your uncomfortability with sexist jokes or sexist uh, thoughts. That's Mm -hmm. other things too. Yep. Yeah, I think that's totally valid. Even if it's a situation where you know the mod team can't do anything or or won't do anything for one reason or another, that's not an excuse to not let them know. You yeah. know, that's not that's not a reason to not let them know. It's still you still should voice your concerns. Absolutely. So, all right, I think that the blue pinata is going to be named Nikki yep. the Boy. I did it. I did it, Landon. I don't know Woo-hoo! if you watched the vod from Thursday night stream, but um, it was a riot. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki was a oh, hot boy cheerleader. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, well, at this point, uh, I can go ahead and save the game. Do you have an article for us to to look at today to round out this um, generalizing about men uh, stream? Yeah. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's not about men. But That's yes. okay. We probably need a man <laughs> break at this point. Oh. All right. This is a cute. This is a cute animal one. Okay. I feel like it's time to bring back the cute animals. I love that. I'm always here for cute animals. They're the best. All right. Game is closing. All right. After prosthetic. Oh, I need to switch to. There we go. Oh, that's not supposed to be on. Okay. Here we go. It's for real now. After prosthetic makers said it couldn't be done, Orphan Koala gets a new foot thanks to a dentist. What? Yeah! (gasps) So, uh, this beautiful koala was a baby uh, whose mother had died and uh, was dying as well. And someone noticed it and then also noticed they were missing a foot. So, um, they tried to get a prosthetic leg. But a dentist actually ended up helping them out. Oh my gosh! Is this is this like a dental tool or something? I, this like this looks really weird. Like this doesn't look like a foot at all. Or is this like normal for animal prosthetics? I don't know. Um, I think that it's like a dental tool. I don't oh. think it. I think it's like made out of stuff that the dentists make. Okay. Let me double. But here it says um, she had been using the doll's sock to cover his stump. Um, the socks just the socks seemed to clear the discomfort triumph appeared to feel whenever he tried to put weight on the limb but christian felt she couldn't stop there oh, yeah so i think christian is just a dentist but like nothing to do with the dental part that made her made it solve oh no she like, bought it, it she bought yeah, it from a company it. it was a rubber yeah it was a rubber boot and put it on with velcro i see that oh my gosh i love this this is so this is so nice. 
I feel Triumph like Triumph is her name. Oh, Triumph the koala. I feel like um like koalas. I always feel like hear like really sad stories about them. Like they're very like um disease prone and birth defect prone, which is so sad because they're so adorable. <laughs> they're kind of like the panda. Like not not as to the extreme, but like pandas aren't supposed to be like alive still. I mean, there there's no there's no no such thing as panda habitat anymore. It doesn't exist. So like they're alive yeah, solely because we've kept them alive. Exist. <laughs> and then also they they terrible at reproducing. Yeah. The worst <laughs> at reproducing. So like koalas are a step up from there where it's like, yeah, all of their habitat has basically been made urban cities. Yeah. And also they're very lazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Koalas and sloths, I feel, are on the same level of how are you still alive? Koalas, all they do is sleep for real. Same um thing with sloths. <laughs> all they do is sleep and eat. It's true. And I've actually seen both a sloth and a koala in in real life, and that like that's all they do. They they really just sleep and eat. Um, I've never mm-hmm. seen a sloth or koala do anything else in the times that I have witnessed these animals in in the real world. <laughs> I am on the same page as you. I've seen them. I've seen them both, and it literally is nap time and dinner time. Mm-hmm. I mean, what a so. mood though. That's what that's what I aspire to live like someday. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that we should all try to be them, but I'm also still wondering what nature has kept them alive for. Maybe it's when the aliens come, they'll be like, oh, so cute. We're going to save Earth, but all the humans can die, but the koalas can live. No, it's us, I think. Like, we, we keep them alive. I think, like, we, we do that. If uh, if China didn't have such a huge program with their, their pandas, I, I don't think we would have pandas in the world anymore. So, you know, I think we do it. I, yeah, I think we absolutely do that. And Nikki makes up a good point that koalas have a lot of STDs. Yeah, so I've heard it, that too. They're very, time. very disease ridden. <laughs> so between nap time and lunch time, it's boom, boom time. <laughs> I mean, the trifecta. So I, did, I stole Nikki's joke, so. Oh, Lar, you put on, okay. Lar put on the, the unicorn badge because um, uh, he's given me some some biddies. I love how it looks. I'm just, I'm seeing it and noticing it in the chat for the first time. That looks beautiful. Thank you, Lar. I just fixed those the other day so that bit people have badges too, not just subs anymore. <laughs> Sorry, totally like a, a side Twitch thing, but I just had to Definitely. call it out. <laughs> How dare you thank your followers for following you and giving you things like biddies. I don't know what those are. It's I money. Don't... It basically means you give me money. Oh, it's, Twitch's, it. it's Twitch's tipping system. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So yeah, All um, right. it boom boom time. Boom boom time for koalas. But this is nice. I like that this koala got a little limb. Very cute. I do too. And also remember... Boom, boom, time with consent. That's, That's all I right. got. Please boom, boom, time <laughs> with consent. Because humans are not koalas. So <laughs> we should be getting consent. <laughs> all right. Are we ready for sign out? I think we're ready for sign out. Okay. All right. So Landon, uh, where can everybody find you? Uh, you can find me at Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, where it's really hot in there. I have a, uh, I have a, what was it? Oh, it's a, uh, it's a Twilight TikTok up that if you could all vote to decide which Twilight character I sound the most like, that would be great. Okay. Um, <laughs> or which voice fits me the best on TikTok. You can find me at Land in Maine, like Land in something. It's a pun. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> oh, you can also buy my book. Yes, Landon has a book. <laughs> um, I have Landon it here. I have it here oh. in my book stack. You do have it there. Oh, look at that. It's right there. Yeah. So this is, it, it's, um, it's a book of poetry focused on travel. So if you like travel or poetry, then check this out, Around the World and Back Again. Yes, Around the World and Back Again. You're getting all the so, applause, by the way. Everyone is redeeming I'm applause right now. That. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, God. They love sending, you. Sending things on me. Oh, I, I don't know how to accept love. I'm the villain. <laughs> That's why they're all <laughs> clapping for you. Um, okay, so where you can find me right here on Twitch. Oh, Lar gave you a wow, not just an applause, wow. also a wow. <laughs> um, so where wow. you can find me right here on Twitch. I stream on Saturdays from about noon to about two. That's my conversation usually with Landon and maybe we have a guest. That sort of thing we talk about, um, role play topics, uh, fandom, girly fandom type of topics, 
things of that nature. I also stream on Thursdays at 6.30. All these times are Eastern, by the way. Stream at 6.30. That is Artistic License. That is my variety stream where we do kind of whatever I want. Right now, most of the episodes are me playing Final Fantasy X. So if you like Final Fantasy X, come check that out. That is what we're going to be playing next week where we just left off as we got, um, we got Ixion. So uh, we're moving on to the Moonflow. That's where that stream is. And I also have a YouTube show, which is Spare Room. That is my scripted role play help content. So if you're interested in that, check that out on YouTube. A new episode goes up every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Uh, just popped all my socials into the into the chat there so you can click on those. The social medias that I'm active on are Twitter and TikTok. It's mostly advertising, not going to lie. However, sometimes on Twitter I drop hot takes. And on the weekends on TikTok, I'll put silly stuff. Like right now, there is a TikTok of uh, CJ and Coke up there. So go check that out. Um it's very cute yes also today for the end of the stream i uh i i want to go raid one of the wolves den people wolves den for you the, you guys that don't know it's a small streamer server that's been really helpful and really supportive i'm trying to do better with networking with more streamers so i can get better at twitch and uh, one of them is doing a 36 hour charity stream right now uh, the proceeds are going to benefit two different charities. One of them is uh, Special Effects, which you guys have probably heard of. They make uh, gaming peripherals and other those types of things for uh, for gamers and hobbyists that uh, that have disabilities that can't like use a typical controller or typical gaming equipment. So um, so that's where some of it is going. And then the other charity that they're donating to is called Action for Me, which is a charity for chronic fatigue syndrome. The the streamer in question's wife has chronic fatigue syndrome. So they are in their last stretch right now. They've just got a couple more hours left on the 36 hour stream. So we're going to go watch King's Fall UK be totally delirious. So I'm going to pop that in. King's Fall UK. Delirium. Okay. Kind of like what you were last year, last week. Oh my God. I was good all the way until 11 o'clock. And then I was like, I was done. I'm so glad we were playing cards against humanity because my brain was done but y'all were able to just talk and it was all cool all right so that raid is a poppin before i hit the button to go ahead and raid so i guess let's sign off so um everybody don't forget to make it a great day and don't forget to be awesome all right thank you guys bye we will see you next week bye.